Good morning. Ivor. Sorry, I'm going to interrupt. We're going to start. I'd invite you to stand. And we're going to have a few moments of silence for the Queen. And to say thanks for her life. To remember her and to say prayers for her family. So please stand if you're able to join in with that. Father God, we come before you and we give you praise and thanks for Queen Elizabeth II. We thank you for the life that she led. We thank you that for many years, Father God, she continually kept Christian faith at the center of um, this community of um, England, Wales, Scotland and Northern Ireland, Lord. We thank you for her strong belief and how it shaped her life and how she sought to follow your example and lead a life of service rather than a life of being served. We pray now, dear Lord, for her family, especially King Charles III, who takes on this awesome responsibility. Please bless them all. And bless those who are grieving at this time. In Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. We, we um, debated if we should go ahead with the harvest today. But within Salvation Army tradition, when we lose people, our focus is often on thanksgiving and celebration, isn't it, for a life. And so what fitting occasion is it to have our harvest time when we give thanks to God? So as we give our thanks, we give thanks for all that he provides, but also for those, if it's important to you, to also today to give thanks for the Queen and her life and what it's meant to so many people. So we're going to start today with a united prayer. So it will come up on the screen, and I will invite you to read along as indicated. Can you click on it and then click display, Elsie? There we go. So if the men read along, I don't know what's happened to our, how I've organized it, but it's obviously gone wrong. But the men together. Oh God, we gather today in your presence with expectation. Hunger for an encounter with you, eager to hear your word. Ladies, please read. All of us join together. May they take root in our hearts and lives and produce an abundant harvest of good words and deeds. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our teacher and our Lord. Amen. Amen. We're going to stand and sing together. Number 70 in the songbook, we plow the fields and scatter the good seed on the ground. Please stand and join in. We plow the fields and scatter the good seed on the
Now we'll sing the third verse in a moment, but after we finish singing, I wonder if you might share something that you're thankful for, um, something that perhaps has blessed you this week. Um, I know there's been a lot of different emotions going on with everything that's happened, but God is still good. God is still doing good things in blessing and providing and giving. So let's sing the third verse together, and then we will share an opportunity for you to share something that you've been blessed by. We thank thee then, O Father, for all things bright and good, the sea time and the harvest, my heart and Accept the gifts we offer for all thy love in God, and what Thank the Lord for his love then. Share something. Doreen's getting better in hospital. Yes, we want to say thank you for that. Amen. You can sit down. Yeah, you don't have to keep standing. Yes. Lovely. Carol. Oh, not quite, not quite. We still have a little bit to go before it's Christmas. Now, if you've probably noticed that there's outside, there's been a bit of a transformation. Has anybody noticed a couple of plants out there? And Yes? Re Rebecca and I have been dipping our finger in, into the green life and uh, trying to make things green. But by no means are we experts. So I thought today, because uh, some of our plants aren't growing very well, so I thought today I might uh, get some advice. So I wondered, actually, I don't know if he's just disappeared, but I wondered if David would help me. David. David. 
James, could you go and let Rebecca, your mother know that I'm looking for David? I wonder if David could help me with some advice on the right type of soil that I need to be planting my, my uh, plants in. So, David, I need your help. Yeah, you. Yeah, I need your advice because Rebecca and I, are, we're trying to grow the plants, but some of them aren't growing very well, and I wonder if it's something to do with the soil. So I, I wonder if, if you could help me. So I'm wondering, do you think it would be good if we planted the seeds in that? Why? It's hard. The plants need something soft so they can get in the ground. Okay, that's important. That's good to know. Okay. So, what if I planted the the seeds in that, David? It will stop the plant from growing then. Yes. Oh, okay. So we don't want stones. What, what about if I planted it in soil like this, David? Look, look at the, what's there. This, will that help? Yes. It would help? Yes. Would it be really good though? Yes. Well, what about the other plants? Are they going to, are they going to interfere with what's going on? Will the weeds get in the way? No. Oh, I think they might. I think they might because they're going to they're going to steal the water, aren't they? Yes. Yeah, they're going to steal some of the nutrients. What if I planted it in that? It will help. It will help. Yeah. Do you think? Do you think out of the four, that's the best? Yes. Yeah. Why? That's right. So th this soil has the freedom for it to grow roots, to go deep, to be established and to become a strong plant, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah and it would produce quite a lot. We, we put one tomato plant out there, but we've had tons of tomatoes come off. Yeah. Thank you very much, David. Do you think he's given some good advice? Yeah, let's encourage him then. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, sometimes, yes. So the soil we plant things in is important and the same is true. And today we're going to be looking at the parable of the sower. And we're just going to watch a quick video that just gives us a bit of advice about planting. Sorry. I've got the wrong order, haven't I, Elsie? Yeah. Yes. So we're going to sing a song first, okay? Uh, we'll watch the video first because she's got it up and then we'll sing the song. Oh, no. We're not going to have the same problem we had last week, are we? One day, a farmer went out to sow some seeds. We'll, we'll, we'll give it one more go. If it doesn't work, then we'll move on. Yeah, this, I need to check the internet connection. As he walked along, he threw the seeds wherever he went. Each seed Okay. Okay, Elsie, put it on the song. You, you probably got the point of what's going to happen in the video. It's, it's going to be a video of the parable of the sower where they walk along. But we're going to sing a song together. Now, this one's not in your book, so there's no point looking. 
Okay, so this is the, the tune, Row, Row, Row Your Boat. Do you know that tune? Yeah. No? So it goes, the, the original words go, Row, Row, Row Your Boat, Gently Down the Stream, Merrily, 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 Life is But a Dream. Okay? But we're going to change it and we're going to say, So, so, so the word, precious seeds of faith, some that fall along the path are quickly snatched away. Okay? So let's sing together. So, so, so the word, precious seeds of faith, some that fall along the path are quickly snatched away. So, so, so the word, precious seeds of truth, some that fall on rocky soil, what Last the whole day through. So, so, so the word, precious seeds of hope. Some that fall among the thorns grow weak from fear and woe. So, so, so the word, precious seeds of life. Some that fall into good soil will live a life for Christ. That's easy, isn't it? Shall we try it again? And, and the rest of us can join in. So Elsie, put it back to the beginning. Just hold on, Keith, okay? Hold on. Save what you're going to say till after we try it again, okay? Okay. Here we go. Back to the beginning. So, so, so the word... Precious seeds of faith, some that fall along the path are quickly snatched away. So, so, so the word, precious seeds of truth, some that fall on rocky soil won't last the whole day through. So, so, so the word, Precious seeds of hope, some that fall among the thorns grow weak from fear and woe. So, so, so the word, precious seeds of life, some that fall into good soil will live a life for Christ. Oh man, it's simple, isn't it? But it gets the message across, all the things that the Word of God can bring. Life, hope, truth, um, all those wonderful things and how important it is to nurture those well in our life. Now very quickly, Keith. Can we song? No, we can't. Okay? Because it's, it, it's, it's not in our repertoire today, okay, Keith? So I'm going to invite Rebecca to come and she's going to bring our first Bible reading. The Bible reading this morning is taken from Matthew chapter 13 and it's verses 1 to 9. And if you're looking in the Blue Core Bible, we're starting on page 978. So it's 978 in the Blue Core Bible if you're following along. The parable of the sower. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat in it while all the people stood on the shore. Then he told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. And as he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. 
But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns which grew up and choked the plants. And still other seed fell on good soil where it produced a crop a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. Whoever has ears, let them hear. Amen. Now we're going to sing again and give you an opportunity to give in the offering. Now, just to be clear, because it's harvest, we actually have two offerings today. So there's the normal offering. This is the normal offering that we normally take. And then afterwards, later on after the sermon, will be your opportunity to give in our harvest offering. Okay, so this is just our normal offering. We're going to say, sing so Sowing in the morning, sowing seeds of kindness, sowing in the noontime and the dewy eaves, waiting for the harvest and the time of plenty. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. Okay, so I'd invite you to stand as uh, people are invited to come and give in the offering. Sowing in the morning, sowing seeds of kindness, sowing for these offerings that you have given us today. We pray and we ask, dear Lord, that you will bless them for the extension of your kingdom. And we pray that you will use them, Father God, to grow your kingdom here in Catford. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Excellent. Are you going to move it on, Elsie? Lovely. So I'm going to invite Carlos now, and he's going to come and bring us the second part of our Bible reading. Good morning. I'm reading from Matthew chapter 13, 18 to 23. Listen then to what the parable of the sower means. 
When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in their heart. This is the seed sown along the path. The seed falling on rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. The seed falling along the thorns refer to someone who hears the word. But the worries of the life of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, making it unfruitful. But the seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop, yielding a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. Amen. Thank you. Okay. Let's pray together before we look more closely at this scripture that God has given us today. Father God, we come into your house and we just really pray today that you will take the word that has been read, the living word of God, and you will open our ears this morning to hear what it is that your Holy Spirit is saying to us today. And although we've heard this story before, perhaps many times, I pray that today it will be as fresh as freshly baked bread and that it will fulfill our spiritual needs and that the living word of God will become a living and moving and active thing that transforms us even more into the likeness of Christ today. Amen. Amen. The happy harvest, everybody. I do love harvest. It's one of my favorite festivals. Um, when I was a kid, harvest was a lot of fun. I don't know if anyone else remembers this. It was a lot of fun. And actually, sometimes it was funny. Harvest was funny. We used to have skits and jokes and things that would happen at harvest. And we'd all sit down. The other reason I like harvest is that it involved food. And when I was a kid, food was really important to me. I remembered everything that had food involved. So harvest was one of my favourites. But I feel that as good as this display is that Hyden and I did that there are a few things missing from it that I want to add this morning to the harvest display. And I'm going to put them at the front. Because um, I've got um, a flat cap and a waistcoat. And, um, and some wellies. Today. I thought we'd, we'd have some wellies in our harvest display. And um, I also want to add in, Michael's done it already, but I want to add in a bit more soil to the harvest display today. Put that down there, a bit of soil. And um, also, I thought we'd have, um, this is the closest I could get to a sheaf of wheat. Okay, so it's campus grass, so just pretend that it's a sheaf of wheat, okay? So we'll add this in as well to our harvest display. And we're going to use those to help us focus on God's word this morning. Because the first thing I want to talk about is, I want to talk about the farmer in the story. You can't have harvest, can you, without farmers? And it's a good time to remember that. You can't have harvest without farmers. But in this story, 
I want to ask you, who is the farmer? job well actually if I thought I was the farmer I think I might have missed the point because in this story there's only one farmer and who is it it's God isn't it God is the farmer and that's very important for us to remember because the work of the kingdom is always God's work. We get to work with him, but it is his work that we're engaged in. And because it's his work, the results of the harvest are his. Success or failure belongs to the Lord and is not ours. We don't have to worry about success or failure of the harvest. That's God's responsibility. All we have to do is to do our bit. So disappointingly for you all, I am not the farmer. Not today, anyway. take it all off. And a bit later on, you can try it all off. The fact that God is the farmer explains something. It explains why the seed is scattered on all kinds of soil. If I was the farmer... I would be tempted to sow the soil, the seeds, only on the good soil. I would decide which people to share the good news of the kingdom with. And inevitably, if I was the farmer, I would decide that some people are not worth the effort. But God is not like that. Everyone deserves to hear the good news of the kingdom. The seeds are scattered far and wide. And it is not for us to decide which soil is good and which isn't. Because we would get it wrong a lot of the time. I have to tell you that the kingdom of God is not just for nice people. If God is the farmer in the story, then who are we? We job is to receive the good news of the kingdom and allow it to grow and produce a harvest in us that will result in more seeds that can be sown. Does that mean that we have no part to play in the sowing of the seed? Well, I don't think so. I think it means 
We don't get to decide who hears about the kingdom and who doesn't. It, does, it means that we don't get to decide who is in and who is out because everybody needs to know. But we do have a part to play in sowing the seed. Now, in modern farming, sowing the seeds has been mechanized. If you've ever watched a farming program, they have seed drills. They have machines, don't they? And what they do is, it makes sure that no seed is wasted. And we might think, well, three quarters of the seed in this story is wasted. We might even say to God, what a waste to waste the seed on this soil that's no good. Can't we devise some sort of system so that we are guaranteed success every time we sow a seed? Can we have a system so we don't waste our breath and our efforts on people who we think are not worth it? Or people who are not interested. Well, I want to say to you today, as attractive as that is, the kingdom of God is not a machine. It's about a person. It's about a relationship. It's not something that can be mechanized or made into a formula that guarantees success. The sower sows the seed abundantly extravagantly, personally. And sometimes the result of his efforts will be failure. But there is something else to remember that failure is not the end of the story because believe it or not, Soil can change. People can change. Can I have an hallelujah? Good. The other thing that you need for a harvest, I've already said, is the soil. And in this story, as Michael's talked about, there are four kinds of soil. So we're going to start, first of all, with the path. Why is the path so hard? That's this one, by the way. Piece of paving stone that we quickly dug up this morning. Don't tell the council. Why is the path so hard? Well, I think it's hard because it's been trampled on so much so that it has compacted itself down so hard so that nothing hurts anymore. And we've talked about this before. This is the typical human response to the pain that life brings. We become hard-hearted so that we can cope. Just let it all bounce off you. Don't let anything go in. Don't let anything hurt you. Nothing is going to sink in. Certainly not a message about God's love. Hard-hearted people say, don't talk to me about God. If God really cared, then where was he when such and such a thing happened to me? And unfortunately, we don't have easy answers to that question. But that doesn't mean that God will give up on the path. Because Funny things happen to paths. Sometimes they crack. Even the ones that are made of concrete, even the ones that look invincible, and a tiny seed of love will get in to the crack. I'm just going to tell you this quickly. When we lived in Bristol, we had crazy paving. It was the ugliest thing you've ever seen. And we spent all our time picking the dandelions out of it that got down in the cracks of the crazy paving. In the end, 
We dug up all the crazy paving and put grass down. And that way the dandelions would at least blend in with the grass. And the garden would look tidier. But the truth is, we could not keep the life out of the garden. It found its way in. And people, as much as they try to pave over their hearts, you can't keep love out. You can't keep life out. Sometimes God finds a way in the hardest soil. So soil can change. This soil in that pot didn't start like that. Rocky grounds can be ploughed up and the stones can be removed. Hard paths can be softened by rain or broken up by a plough or determined seeds of love. And thorny ground can be weeded. The thing about the good soil is it wasn't born good. It didn't get that way by itself. Someone put the work in beforehand. Someone ploughed it and removed the rocks and the rain fell and kept it soft. Someone picked out those weeds before they got big and choked the crop. And this is the work of God the Holy Spirit. He prepares the ground to receive the seed if we allow him to. Because problems come to everyone, don't they? Life happens to everyone. The birds that ate the seed that Carlos read about that fell on the path, they didn't just fly over the path, did they? They flew over the whole field. The sun didn't just shine on the rocky ground. It shone on the whole field. The thorns didn't just try to take root in the thorny ground. They tried to take root everywhere. Not only do we all have rocks and sun and birds and thorns, we don't have to stay rocky or thorny or hard. If we allow him to, God the Holy Spirit can tend the soil of our hearts, soften the ground, remove the rocks and the thorns and make us into fruitful people if we allow him to. So where does this leave us? It leaves us, every single one of us, out of excuses. There are in fact no excuses for not being part of the harvest. You see, if you looked to try and find the most trampled on people on God's good earth, you would probably find them in the developing world, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you? used to call it the third world. We don't call it the third world anymore. We call it the developing world. That's where you find the most trampled on people. What you don't find in the developing world are many people with no faith. What you find in the developing world is people who believe some of the most trampled on people on God's good earth are the strongest believers. The fact that life is hard is not an excuse not to believe. It's a reason to believe with all your heart that something better must be possible. Something better than this old hard life must be possible. 
Similarly, being born with obstacles to overcome or rocks to remove or worries in this life is not an excuse to allow these things to take over and determine the outcome of your existence. Because rocks can be broken up and removed. Thorns can be weeded out. If you have genuine obstacles that prevent you from allowing the word of God to go deep and transform your life, all you have to do is ask the Lord to help you. Things can change for all of us. And fear of failure is not an excuse not to share the good news of the kingdom of God. It's not good enough to say, well, three quarters of my effort will come to nothing. You don't know that. You don't know the work of God, the Holy Spirit, what he's already been doing on the soil. Failure is not an excuse not to try. Some of the greatest entrepreneurs of our time Bill, Dyson, um, Bill Gates, James Dyson, they experienced failure after failure after failure after failure until they had a breakthrough. The difference is that they didn't give up. If you sow nothing, you will get nothing. We can all be part of the harvest. Whatever our circumstances, whatever has happened to us, whatever difficulties we have to overcome. And the last thing I want to say very, very quickly as a word of warning is about thorns. I'll just put this back. There's a problem with thorns that none of the other types of soil have. The problem with thorns is that they come back. If you remove rocks, they've gone. Hearts that have been softened by love stay soft. But thorns are repeat offenders. We live in a very materialistic society where money is king. And this message surrounds us all the time in the world we live in. We are continually surrounded by what Jesus called the deceitfulness of wealth. Decisions are made in the West, not on whether something is right or not, but on whether it will cost and how much it will cost. Whether it will affect the bottom line. That's how we make decisions, not on whether it's right or not, but how, on it, how it will affect the finances. For a believer... Money is not king, Jesus is. And sometimes it me, will mean that doing the right thing will cost us. Sometimes it will mean that tough decisions have to be made about stepping out in faith and trusting God for the future. The thorns come back. And you must be on your guard from allowing them to take root and choke out faith in you. You must be on your guard from preventing the, th from, we mustn't let the thorns stop us from being all that God wants us to be. But you have to constantly watch because they will creep in unless you keep 
pulling them out. Don't allow anything to stop you from being the person that God made you to be. I'm going to hand back to Michael now. you, Rebecca. I'm just going to move this. We want to give time. We're, we're going to give in just a moment into the, the harvest offering. And um, we want us to do that as a, in a sense of response, not in a sense of obligation, um, for those of you who are wondering what the, the offering does, it will be the offering we give in these envelopes, that 75% of the money goes directly to the core, but is put in a special fund. So it's not used to keep the lights on, it's not used to make sure Rebecca and I get paid or that the bills are paid. It's used just for mission. It's put in a special fund. Rebecca and I have to ask permission of DHQ to use it. So this, these funds will go specifically for new mission initiatives where we're either seeking to serve or show God's love or use it to tell people about Jesus. And um, this year, we're hoping to use this money. We're, we're going to be having discussions with the leadership team uh, in the week to come. But we're going to use that money, hopefully, to start a heat bank. Uh, to provide a safe place for people to come and stay warm during this winter where people's energy bills are going to be so high and they're going to need help and relief. So that's what you're giving towards. Okay. But I also want to tie it together with what Rebecca's talking about. Rebecca's talking about sowing the seed of faith. And actually sometimes the easiest thing we can do to do that is to offer an invitation. To offer an invitation for people to come to this place. So we have here on the mercy seat invitations. We've had them specially printed for next week, for the cafe church next week where it's going to be an environment which will be easier for people who aren't used to coming to church to come in, to, to hear, to enjoy some music, to share in some fellowship, but for us also to bring them the message of God. So as we come with this envelope and put it down, I want you to take up the invitation. And this week, I want to encourage you, you don't have to take ten Maybe you want to take 10. We've got plenty of invites, but only one. That's all we're asking. Take one invitation. And this week, invite one person to come to church next Sunday. Some of the invitations might fall on hard soil. That's okay. Our job is to scatter the seed, to make the invitation. So don't get discouraged if you invite somebody and they say, no, you've still been faithful. You've still done. That might be the first step to that hard heart cracking. But I'd invite you, as you give one offering, to take up a seed, a seed of invitation to invite people to come. We're going to sing together. And I'm just going to ask Anne Florence to play the tune through to us. It's number 995 in the blue books, if you're, you're following in the blue books. But it says, bring your tithes into the storehouse. Lay your best at Jesus' feet. Bring our offerings to the altar. Can you move it on, Elsie? Make your sacrifice complete. So... M. Florence is just going to play the tune through so we hear how it goes and then we'll sing together. And as we sing, I'd invite you to, to come and bring your offerings and perhaps 
Verse 2, Anne Florence. Uh, actually, verse 3, if we take a break so that you and David are able to come and bring your offerings and take an invitation as well. So we just wait until we start singing and then we'll bring our inv- our offerings. There's a chorus. Let's sing together then. Bring your ties into the storehouse. Bring your ties into the storehouse, lay your best at Jesus' feet, bring an offering to the altar, make your sacrifice complete, bring your dearest Thank you, Elsie. We'll just wait. There we go. We'll sing the fourth verse. We'll try and avoid my mucking it up at the end (laughs) by having the piano. Let's stand together. For move the Lord, for he has promised that his blessing he will send. Heaven's wind. Father God, we come before you and we give you these offerings. We give you these special offerings, Father God, giving back from the the many blessings that you have given to us. We pray that they will be used for the spreading of your word. So that we as a church, Father God, can make your name known to all people. We pray that you will bless it. We pray, dear Lord, for our promise this week to extend an invitation 
to invite just one other person to come and join with us next week as we share together in a new and special way. But we pray that the people that you want us to invite, you will make clear to us and that you will give them soft hearts to hear your invitation to come, that they too might be blessed and know your love and your grace. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. We have just a few announcements. Hopefully some of them will come up. Um, but the, the big announcement is next week is our cafe church. So we have been announcing this, but I just want to reiterate, it's going to be different. Okay, don't come next week expecting it to be the same kind of service it is this week. It's going to be different. We're going to have tables out. We're going to be sitting around tables. We're going to have tea and coffee and cakes during our worship time. We're going to have people coming to perform music especially for us. We're going to have interviews. We're going to have discussions on the tables with each other. And, of course, our divisional commander is going to be joining us. And she's going to become part of that celebration. We're even going to have a quiz specially prepared by Hydran for us. Um, to, to join in. So it's a great opportunity, as I said, to invite somebody to come along who might not be used to, the, to a normal church setting. They'll be a little bit more comfortable, a little bit more informal. But don't mistake in it, we are still worshipping God next week. We are still coming together to, to glorify Him and to proclaim His name and the Word of God. So please invite people. We have the big day out coming up. Thank you to all those who have given your names. Please, if you are a parent of a child who is coming and they are under the age of 18 years old, please return the form that which Rebecca has given you because um, we need... Okay, there is a form for the children that are coming. Um, that's just in case of an emergency. It's, it's one of the things we have to do as the Salvation Army to cover ourselves. As I mentioned, the DC is coming next week. But another thing, to, there's two more things I need to make you aware of. The first is that there is a letter at the back of the hall where the Salvationists are from the territory explaining some changes which are going to be made in the army. Um, they're going to be making some changes and these changes are going to impact us because it impacts our division that we're in. So I'd invite you, please don't take the letter away because we don't have a copy for everybody. But if you just take a moment to read the letter to make yourself aware of the changes and the reason that these changes are taking place in the army. The second is to ask for anybody who is willing to help. The Salvation Army has been asked as part of the government's response to the death of the Queen to man uh, canteen units in central London over the coming days. I believe from next week, isn't it? From Wednesday next week, we will be having manned canteens operating from something like 8 in the morning till 10 o'clock at night. These will be positioned at places where people will be going to grieve, lay flowers. So they're looking for people who are willing to come along and be part of that and man the canteen, make tea and coffee, um, and they're also looking for individuals who are willing to just purely be there to talk to people, to pray with people who might be struggling with their feelings or the loss of the Queen. So um, the Salvation Army is very much part of the response that is taking place to do with the Queen's death. So if that is something you feel you could give, if you could give um, five or six hours uh, to, to go and do that, uh, then please talk to Rebecca and I and uh, we will let the people who are organizing that know so that they will get into contact with you and arrange for a time for you to go and assist with that. And the final thing I want to announce is just to say thank you to all those who have helped collect in the big collection. Last week, for those who collected last week, we collected £143.86. So we haven't yet collected, counted the collection from this week. Uh, we'll let you know that next week. But um, 
Thank you for that. And I would encourage you, as I said um, last week, this is something you can all take part in. So if you want to make something and sell it and give the money to the big collection to support the work of the Salvation Army, we can do this throughout the whole year. Uh, it doesn't have to just be in September. So if that's something God's laying on your heart, then uh, please follow up on that and um, add to what we as a church can contribute to the work of the Salvation Army. But we're going to conclude by singing together. Come, ye thankful people, come. Hopefully it will come up. There we go. Come, ye thankful people, come. Raise the song of harvest home. All is safely gathered in ere the winter storm begin. Let's stand and sing together. Come, ye thankful people, come. bless you and be with you. May he encourage you and help you sow the seeds of his good news so that the communities we live in are fruitful places for God's kingdom. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please join us for a cup of tea.